Let me start this lecture by describing the concept of reducibility with an example. Here is a playground that is circular and you would like to calculate the circumference of it. How do you measure the circumference? Should we look for giant circular scales or do we have a better solution? The problem of finding circumference of a circle reduces to the problem of measuring the radius of the circle. With just a small scale and a medium sized rope, you can solve this problem. Here is another example. The problem of walking from location A to an unknown location B in a city. It reduces to finding the directions on a map for that city. Now let's say A and B are two problems and problem A is reduced to problem B. Meaning if we solve B, we solve A as well. In the context of theory of computation, if A can be reduced to B and B is decidable, then A is decidable. If A is already known to be an undecidable problem and is reducible to B, then B should also be undecidable. Let us consider the problem of traveling from our galaxy to the neighboring galaxy overnight. We shall name this problem A. This problem reduces to the problem of building an intergalactic spaceship that can safely transport us overnight. Let's call this problem B. The closest galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, meaning it will take us 2.5 million years if we travel at the speed of light. Hence problem A is unsolvable. But problem A reduces to problem B, meaning if a solution exists for problem B, then a solution exists for problem A, which gives rise to a contradiction as we just proved problem A is unsolvable. Therefore, problem B is unsolvable. The same logic can be applied for proving undecidability of certain languages. As we establish that the language ATM, the acceptance problem of a Turing machine is undecidable using diagonalization technique, a decider for ATM does not exist. Now, Let's say a decider for a certain language X somehow decides the language of ATM, which is already proved to be undecidable. Then we can confidently say that the decider for language X should never exist and the language X is undecidable. Okay, so using the same logic, I would be proving to you formally that halting problem is undecidable. Let us consider the language halt tm, defined formally this way. It consists of strings that contain the pair during machine description m and the strings for which the machine m halts. Using the technique of proof by contradiction, we shall prove that halt tm is undecidable. So the first step is to assume that a decider exists for halt tm. Can we use this magic decider box of halt tm to build a decider for atm? Turns out we can. Here is the formal proof. I will try my best to explain this proof visually. We can build a decider s for atm by using a magical decider r that decides halting problem. Here is what we are going to do. We will simulate the machine M on string W on halt TM decider R. If R ends up in reject state, it means the machine M will end up in a loop on string W. Hence, there is no way machine M is going to accept the string W. So the decider S, which is supposed to decide ATM confidently, can reject 
the machine string pair m comma w perfect so i've drawn uh, you know the circuitry that's going to do do that in that machine all right when hard tm decider r ends up in accept state it means that the machine m will halt on input string w but it does not say whether it halts on an accept state or a reject state in the machine m okay so all it says is that the machine m halts on the input string w so what do we do now what we can do is confidently simulate m on w on a universal turing machine and see if m ends up in accept state or a reject state there is no way this universal turing machine will end up in a loop as hard tm decider r just certified it will halt for surely on input w so if the machine m ends up in accept state on string w make sure s ends up in the accept state if the machine m ends up in reject state make sure s ends up in reject state so there you go so i've connected the universal turing machine that is simulating m on w uh, the connections for accept and reject state are going to the accept and reject state of the decider s hence we are able to build a decider s for atm using decider r for halt tm as no decider exists for atm the magic decider r for halt tm does not exist in reality hence halt tm is proved to be an undecidable language now we have two non undecidable languages and an uncountably infinite set of undecidable languages waiting to be discovered you will be introduced to several languages later on that are proved to be undecidable using the same technique when a problem a reduces to problem b if problem b is decidable then problem a is decidable if we already know that problem a is undecidable that will imply a decider can never exist for b hence b would be undecidable as well I'll spend some time here explaining the logical fallacy new learners can fall to. Let's say the problem A reduces to the problem B. If B is unsolvable, it does not mean that A is unsolvable. The problem A can reduce to multiple problems. Even if one of the problems is solvable, then A will be solvable, right? The problem of traveling from Burlington to New York within 6 hours reduces to buying a ticket to the flight from BTV to JFK because it takes only about an hour and a half. Just because the flight gets canceled does not mean that you cannot get to New York from Burlington in 6 hours. You might as well drive. The other logical fallacy is that when A reduces to B and A is solvable, it does not mean b is solvable think about this example the problem of going to new york to burlington in 6 hours can also reduce to super luminal traveling pod a vehicle that travels faster than speed of light just because you can get to nyc from burlington within 6 hours does not mean that you have solved super luminal travel okay I will end this video by repeating the underlying technique used in the problems pertaining to reducibility. When problem A reduces to problem B and problem B is decidable, then problem A is decidable. When problem A reduces to problem B and problem A is undecidable, then problem B should be undecidable. Okay, so just focus on these two statements and ignore the other two statements that I have here. 